All right, here we go with Excel lesson number 60 from 5th grade Excel. 5th grade Excel lesson 60 on probability. A lot of this is going to be reading, so you might want to just look at your paper and read along with me. Uh, I will be showing you up here on the screen what I'm reading at the same time, though, if it works, hopefully. No, that's not going to do it. Let's try clicking on that and go on to the pan. Okay. Probability is the chance or likelihood of an event occurring. The possible occurrence of an event is called an outcome. So the probability means what is the chance that something's going to happen. And the possibility, the possible occurrence, the, the, the thing that actually might happen, that's called an outcome. For example, if you flip a coin, there are three possible outcomes we ignore the chance that the coin will land on its edge because the probability is so low. Of course, when you flip a coin, you're going to get heads or tails. It's usually not going to land on the very edge of the coin. The other two possible outcomes are heads or tails. The probability for a coin landing heads can be written two different ways. Number of favorable outcomes goes as the numerator. That means the ones that you are looking for. And the total number of possible outcomes uh, goes as the denominator. So let's say we're trying to find out what the probability of getting heads is. We would put heads over the heads or tails, or the total number of possible outcomes. And since there is one heads side, and there are two possible outcomes, we say that probability of getting a heads, or the outcome of heads, is one out of two. Number two, to find the probability of getting uh, you know, the same idea, you can write it, it using the language out of instead of making it as a fraction. So the number of favorable outcomes out of the total number of possible outcomes, you can see that's the exact same thing as this one up here, only they wrote it side to side instead of as a numerator and a denominator. And in this case, again, we want to say heads is the one we're looking for out of heads or tails or the total possible outcomes. And there are there is one heads, one out of two, because heads and tails makes two. Probability is one out of two. You can see this means the exact same thing as that does. So the next part says, what is the probability of the coin landing tails? Well, since the probability of the heads is the same as the probability of the tails, both are equally likely. Does this mean if you flip a coin ten times, you will get five heads? Well. That's the probability. The probability of if you flip a coin ten times, you would expect to get normally five heads. But that doesn't always happen. You might get four heads, you might get three, you might get six, you might get seven. But the probability is that you will get half of the um, flips ending up being heads. All right. Now on to the uh, bottom section down here, the lesson 60, bag of jelly beans. You can see that we have a little chart here that has a circle with Y's, R, B, and G. The Y's are the, the R, B, and G are the colors of the jelly beans. Y meaning yellow, R red, B is black, and G is uh, green. So the, the text, read along with me here, says if a jelly bean is taken out of the bag without looking, that means at random, you're just randomly picking one out, determine the probability for selecting each of the four colors. First of all, it says, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, when you look at the bag, the possible outcomes is the total number of jelly beans that could be in the bag or that are in the bag. And so the total possible outcomes are, see if you could write it before I write it, total possible outcomes are, see if this works, 10. There are 10 possible outcomes. Now they ask us, what's the probability of getting yellow? Well, there's one yellow jelly, uh, excuse me, there are four yellow jelly beans, and the, pot, and the probability of the total possible outcomes is 10, so the probability would say is 4 tenths. Go ahead and write that on your paper. All right, now I'd like you to figure out what the probability is for numbers 4, 5, and 6, green, black, and red. Pause the video while you're figuring it out. Turn it back on when you're ready to see the answer. Green, there are two green out of 10 possible outcomes, black, 3 black out of 10 possible outcomes, and red, 
There's one red out of ten possible outcomes. Number seven says, what is the sum of probabilities of all the pro possible outcomes? Sum of all the probabilities. Here are all the probabilities. What is the sum of those probabilities? Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. It's a little tricky problem, but do your best and then turn on the video to see if you got it right. Okay, sum means the answer to an addition problem. So that means we have to add all the probabilities together. There they are. And 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 1 equals 10. So the answer is 10 tenths. And of course, 10 tenths is equal to 1. So the sum of all the probabilities is 1. What is number 8? What is the probability of selecting an orange jelly bean from this bag? Well, how many orange jelly beans are in the bag? There aren't any. So what we would say is that this is impossible. Write that on your blank there. The probability is impossible. The probability of any event is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. So you can't have a probability that's zero because that means it's impossible and that's why I wrote impossible right there. Okay, as we just discussed on the last page, we're flipped over to the second half of the lesson now. If the probability of an event is zero, it's called impossible. If the probability of an event is one, it is called certain. That means for sure it's going to happen. In other words, on this last problem, what's the probability of picking a jelly bean out of the bag? Any colored jelly bean. Well, that's certain. You're for sure going to get a jelly bean because that's what's in the bag. And you would say the prob probability there is one. Now we look at this spinner. Here's a spinner that has several different digits on the different sections, and it says, what is the total number of possible outcomes for the spinner, assuming the arrow does not stop on a line? Well, we've got a 3, a 4, a 4, a, a 5, let's see, I'm sorry, a 3, a 5, a 4, a 3, a 5, a 4, a 6, and a 4. So there are eight different sections. Here they are. Woo! Let's try that again. And we've got this one, this one, this one, eight different sections on there so that the total number of possible outcomes is 8. What is the probability the arrow will stop on, coming right down to here, on a 4? Well, there are 1, 2, 3 4s, so we'd say the probability of stopping on a 4 is 3 out of 8. I want you to do 10 through 12, pause the video and start it up again when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, 3, there are 1, 2, 2 3s, so the probability is 2 out of 8, which we could then reduce to 1 out of 4. Because you can have equal probabilities, just like equal fractions. 5, there are two 5s, so the probability is the same for 5s. 2 out of 8, or 1 out of 4. And 6, there's only one 6, so we'd say the probability is 1 out of 8. All right, now down to the last section of the lesson and uh, some more probabilities. It says probabilities shown by fractions of less than one half are considered unlikely. Probabilities shown by fractions greater than one half are considered likely. The most likely outcome is the one represented by the greatest fraction. The least likely outcome is the one represented by the smallest fraction. Okay, so let's take a look back at the other problems that you just did. Uh, they're not on the screen, but look at number 12. The probability of getting a 6 is 1 out of 8. So that's the least likely outcome that you would expect from spinning that spinner. The greatest outcome would probably be spinning a 4, because there are three 4s on there, and that's the largest fraction. So that the, has the greatest possibility of happening, uh, or is the most likely outcome. Now back to your text. We're reading right here. It is likely the spinner shown above would stop on a number between 3 and 5, but unlikely the spinner will stop on a 6. Okay, because 3, 4, and 5, you, you have a really good chance of picking one of those. Getting the number 6, very difficult. It, and now, number 13. In this example, probability is determined by visually comparing the amount of space occupied by each possible outcome. 
which outcome is most likely and which is least likely. So what they're saying is if you spin this spinner, which one is the most likely that you will land on and which is the least likely? Pause the video while you fill in the answer. Okay, so of course the answer to this is that the, the most likely one is to get the bird and the least likely is to get the frog. That's it. Okay, sorry, I'm recording my lesson pretty more. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm just teaching myself. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good stuff. Um, Friday, our assembly is at.